Hey folks, um, I just wanted to say hello, and um, as a lot of fly fishermen, I think right now we're focused on tying flies, you know, we're staying at home and um, trying to be safe, and so I figured since I'm tying flies anyway for the upcoming season, I'm filling the box with flies that I actually use, um, and the flies that I want to have with me, so I figured I might as well share those with everybody and you know um uh, everybody's got their favorites so i'm not saying that these flies are the, the best flies or anything like that but i know that they're the flies i'm going to show you are flies that um that i've used you know a lot and they work for me so if we're going to share them might as well and tie them anyway um trying to say this first video i know the focus uh the camera isn't perfect. Um, I set it on manual focus so that it wasn't constantly refocusing and um, it's pretty noisy when I do that. You can hear it on the microphone. So um, I did the manual focus and I couldn't tell as I was doing it that it was the depth of field was pretty shallow and so the fly is slightly out of focus but uh, it's not too bad and just for the sake of you know honesty and getting things done and moving along I'm just gonna leave it as it is and um, you know, as we go along, hopefully the next one will be better. Um, I'll, I'll try to make sure that I get that focus um, a little bit better. But uh, like I said, it's not too bad. And I think uh, I think it'll be all right. So um, please enjoy and uh, stay safe. Thanks, folks. Let's try. So the first one I'm going to tie um, is the Pass Lake Wet Fly, at least a version of it that I like to tie. It's not, it's not like the original one exactly, but it's a version that I tie and um, works for me. Um, I like to use it in the spring, May, June, um, through the summer when fish are more active, when fish are moving to um, moving to a fly a lot more, when they're engaged with hatching bugs, um, is when I like to use this fly a lot. So I'll just go over the materials real, real quick. Um, so I'm going to use some peacock hurl. Um, this is just a um, strung variety, works fine. Um, this is a hen back. Um, so instead of um, the stiff neck hackle, even on a hen, it can get kind of stiff. This is um, the back feathers. Um, you can use golden pheasant tippet feathers, um, black thread, and um, for the wing, I'm going to use um, antron instead of calf tail. I just um, it's so much easier to tie with Antron that I use that instead of the calf tail. But feel free to use, if you, if you like to use more natural materials, use, you could use calf tail or um, snowshoe rabbit foot, um, anything like that. White, uh, you know, feathers. Alright, so firstly, we um, this is a size 12 heavyweight champ hook. Um, so I tie it on this hook quite a bit in that size. Size 12s, 10s, 12s, 14s, and that range is usually what I use. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is tie in, um, after we get the, the thread on, we're going to tie in some of this golden pheasant um, for the tail. So I like the tail to be um, something like that, so not quite the shank length. A little bit less, something like that. Um, if you don't have this um, golden pheasant tippets, um, don't sweat it. Um, you could tie it without a tail, first of all. Um, or um, you could just use um, fibers from the hackle that you're going to use, um, from hen hackle or rooster hackle. Um, no problem at all. Okay? So we got those uh, tippets tied in, and we're going to tie in the pheasant. I'm going to use um, two fibers of pheasant tail, uh, or excuse me, peacock curl. Um, so we're going to tie that in so that it's um, along the length of the body there. Um, we don't, we don't want to tie it in back here because we want to avoid getting a lumpy butt on the fly. So we'll tie it up here like this some loose wraps just to get it on there and then try to create a smooth underbody. Um, 
What I like to do with this um, for reinforcing the peacock is I wind it forward, wind it back, and then wind the thread over it. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to wind it, the body up to about, uh, about there. That'll leave some room for the wing and the hackle. Then I'm going to wind it back over itself. And then I'm going to take the thread and just wind the thread through the body. Um, that way, um, since we wound the peacock back and forth, when we wind the thread through it, we're guaranteed to be um, catching uh, the hurl stem rather than just winding between it. Um, and we don't have to counterwind that way either. Okay, so next I'm going to do the Antron wing. So um, just use the um, the yarn just as it comes off the card. Um, is all we're going to do. Okay. Trim the, the excess off. Um, I usually make the the wing go about to the bend of the hook. So cut it off about about there. Um, now who knows what the fish think, but to me, when I look at this fly, I think about it um, looking like a um, either a, um, a hatch done that has uh, sunk again, or a um, um, a spinner that's gotten sunk in in the water. Um, so who knows? Uh, it could be a hatching caddis swimming through the water. Um, all I know is when the when the fish are engaged with hatching bugs of any kind, it seems to be a pretty effective pattern. Okay, so next we're going to pick a uh, feather to use here. I like these, this hen back because it's softer. If you have uh, a whole hen um, cape, um, sometimes it'll come with the, um, like the breast feathers on the side, and I like those a lot as well. Those are nice and soft. Uh, the regular hackle on a lot of hen that you get these days is pretty, or the fibers are pretty stiff and I just don't like them as much. Probably doesn't make much of a difference um, overall, but I like to think that these softer feathers have more movement. Um, so I'm just going to trim off the fuzz and the um, really soft downy uh, parts of the feather down there. And I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So. Just grab the feather by the tip and pull the um, pull the fibers back so we get a tie-in point like that. Okay, um, I'm going to tie it in with the shiny side of the feather, the outside of the feather, um, facing me, and the curve um, like that. So the curve is facing the fly. three wraps. Um, we'll go underneath and just throw a half hitch in there um, just to keep track of things. Trim the, um, the excess. Um, now when I go to wrap this feather you have to be pretty careful. Um, the stems on these are pretty fragile. So I like to use some hackle pliers of some kind. I just feel like it can be a little more gentle when I do that rather than using my fingers. Um, so, as you wrap it, you can just kind of sweep the fibers back a little bit so that um, you don't catch any um, going in the wrong direction. And then I'll just kind of wrap forward, like I said, as I sweep these back a little bit to prevent feathers from getting stuck out. Um, the front. Alright. And then when I'm done, I'll just capture that. I'm not going to worry too much about any of these um, that are sticking out like this because what I'll do is I'll pull everything back when I wrap the, the head. 
Alright, so I'll, I like to put a few wraps on before I trim the, the butt end of that feather. Alright, now pull those back again and create the head of the fly. Okay. Uh, we'll just, um, I do like to put some head cement on. So let me see if I can find it here. I've got um, bought these little uh, bottles. I've got a giant bottle of head cement, so I like to put it in these little nail glass, nail polish bottles. Um, uh, and what I usually do is put put the um, cement right on the thread, and then um, a few wraps, and then whip finish. I feel like putting it on the thread like that um, does a good job of making sure that the head cement has penetrated. Alright, so um, that's it. That's my version of a Pass Lake wet fly. Um, I like to fish this fly all, all kinds of ways. Um, when I see rising fish, I'll cast upstream to the fish, um, almost like I'm fishing a dry fly. If it cast it upstream and dead drift it, um, I'll dead drift it um, near the surface. Um, sometimes I'll let it sink deeper. I like to uh, cast it out and swing it. I'll let it drift down below me and gently bring it across current. Sometimes just letting it hang in the current. I'll post a link um, down below to a, um, a post that I wrote about how I like to how I like to fish wet flies. So anyway. Um, Thanks folks, and uh, hopefully this will just be the first one in a series of these videos that I do for you. Thank you.